to To check the vending machines. This is a weekly pop culture podcast where two best friends get together, talk about pop culture stuff, movies, TV shows, all that jazz. I'm Jason. That's Zach. What's going on, bro? Not much, man. You know, just uh, you know, tiring week. I get tiring. that, man. It's a Friday night. Yeah. This Modelo mm. is particularly dank. Oh yeah. Particularly dank. Yeah. I don't, huh. I, I feel like my refrigerator ruins beer so fast yeah i know that there's definitely there's something especially like i don't know how old your fridge is but i know especially older fridges there's something with like the free or whatnot that they like can I, mess up like not just beer but like any sort of like drink that you put in it, there and part of me was thinking like okay maybe because the it's the light affecting the hops because the glass because the glass is clear mm-hmm. but then i'm like i don't know that can't be it can it because like, it's off when you close the door so I, I don't know what it is, but even my, the last place I lived, my refrigerator just killed beer and hmm. killed hops. So it was pretty much I had to, like, get the beer, slam it within a night, and then that's, like, because if I don't, this is a week old now, week in my yeah. fridge, tastes like crap. Hmm. Yeah, no, I don't know exactly what it is, but I've definitely heard that problem before of, like, fridges fucking up beer it just it tastes terrible now yeah i don't know what's going on bro but hey this is check the vending machines yes pop culture podcast we are in the midst of daniel almost craig, done almost Damn. done daniel craig james bond movie review-a-thon yes we are movie four for 2015 2015 uh specter, specter. and we are a week away from the final Daniel Craig James Bond movie. The fifth in a decade, which feels... It doesn't feel right. No, more than a decade. How long? It's 15 years, oh, right? Oh, six, right? Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, like 15 years he's been yeah. Bond. Which is the one of the things that I was thinking about today, which is weird. It just feels weird that... Because I, I think now he's like one of the longest actors to ever play Bond. But I feel like... He has, like, the average amount of films. Like, Pierce Brosnan has four films, and he was Bond for, like, eight years. Yeah. <coughs> oh, God. I or, no, he has five. Does Pierce Brosnan have four or five? I think he has five, actually. Well, like, four. I think he has the same amount as Daniel Craig, but, like, he did it in <coughs> way less time. Gold member. Golden Eye. He has Golden Eye. He has World's No Time. Not enough. Uh, yeah, The World Is Not Enough. Die Another Day. Die Another Day. Tomorrow Never Dies. Four. Hold on. Golden That's Eye. four. Die another day, tomorrow never dies. The world is not enough. Is that it? Okay. Maybe that is it. Yeah, it's four. Right? <clears throat> God. I thought there was... Cost attack. I don't know. Yeah, dude, I was having a bad problem with a cough attack earlier. Hey, I don't man, know what happened. This fucking Modelo, man, bro. I just took I feel like steps. I got... Well, I, at, at one point, I feel like I had, like, <clears throat> something caught in my throat, and, like, it felt like I had to throw up, and then I couldn't throw up. It was, like, mm. the weird... It was... It felt like I was, like, half choking for, yeah. like, an hour. Yeah. Now I get... Yeah, I guess there's just four. But still, it's like, look at... 95 to 2002. Like, he did that shit in seven years. He pumped out four movies. Pierce I, Rock, I don't or, understand. Daniel Craig goes... 2006 and takes him till i mean i'll forgive him 2021 because it's supposed to come out last year but it takes him from 2006 to 2020 to come out with one more movie well i don't understand either is the reasoning for having only five movies in 15 years when the actor yeah, isn't understand the, the giant space when the is actor not. is not working like that yeah <clears throat> you know like it's not like they're having the fine time to make he's not working that much I mean, I think, I think in between, I mean, he still wasn't working that much, but I think in between 
uh, Quantum and Skyfall. I think he did The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, yeah. and he did, like, some horror movie. But, like, still, that's, like... Yeah, he wasn't pumping out a bunch of yeah, shit. Like, I don't know why like they could like... I think it's just because he hated <laughs> playing James Bond, like we've said before. Yeah. It's not like he's, so Pier- he just not, put it off. It's not like he's Pierce Brosnan, who is actively in two or three movies a year. Yeah, he's just always in shit, yeah. You know, Daniel Craig, I couldn't even tell you besides Golden Compass. Or whatever that fuck the movie is. He was in Golden Compass. And now, I mean, he started to do more stuff lately, but... Um, but yeah, even... Even after Skyfall, I feel like he didn't do I that I couldn't much even tell until... you his filmography beyond Bond and Lair Cake. Well, he did uh, Knives Out. Knives Out, oh. yeah. So he did that. He did that, and then he did... I know he did The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I didn't know he was in The Gold I'm pretty Gold. sure he plays the main, um, like, the main guy. Or and I know Gold... he was. I know he was in some horror movie, too. Is Golden Compass also his eternal... His, his, his internal, his internal majesty, his infernal, ma- the anti Narnia, his dark materials. His dark that's materials. Golden Compass, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's in yeah, that movie. Yeah, that's Golden Compass. <clears throat> I have no, I the have show no has... idea. Dude, hold on. I just clicked on his IMDb. How is there a knives knives out two and well, two, three two already is, announced? Two is like, what the hell filming. is this shit? I knew two was filming, but there's already a three on the hey. board. Yeah, he can do those things real fast, but he can't do Bond. Obviously, they're different movies, and they they film differently. Oh, you know what? I didn't watch it, but he was in Logan Lucky. Oh, I, I forgot about either. that. I, I never that watched either. that movie, though. That was like the NASCAR heist yes, that's film the Soderbergh movie, right? Adam Driver, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Chang Tatum. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Adam Driver, Channing Tatum, and yeah, and Daniel Craig. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot he he had that weird bit in mm-hmm. episode seven where he was like a stormtrooper, <laughs> but I mean you wouldn't know it was him yeah, exactly. except that they told you. But yeah, I mean look, it, his IMD, between Skyfall and Spectre, he did nothing. So for three years he did like fucking Bub Kiss, but it still took three yeah. years to come out with yeah, it's not his like, next movie. And to be fair, I don't know. It's so not to be fair. To, to say this. Oh, you know what? He was in some shit because he was in Cowboys was, and yeah, Aliens, too. Yeah, I remember that. Basically, that like, between Quantum awesome. and Skyfall is his most busy time. That's why yeah, I remember basically, seeing yeah. him in Cowboys because I think because Quantum came out, right? And then he then he was in Cowboys and Aliens? Is that the year? The how, how it went? How it went? Uh, I think it was... Hold on. I don't know Not if they close, were that I'm saying, close. In terms of like a year or two apart. Right? Um, let's see. Cowboys and Aliens was 2011. Oh, so, yeah. so, so no, it was three years apart, apart. Two years apart. But yeah, it was. But that was basically his next big movie. Oh no, he was in that World War... I forgot about... He was... He's in a bunch of forgettable movies. Defiance. The World War II movie as well, where it was Defiance, like... Yeah. He helped like... Yeah, like, yeah, like Jews we'll, fight against the Nazis. Like yeah, so yeah, that was like what he did after Quantum of Solace, Again, and then he so did ba- Cowboys and Aliens. And then he did to 2012 too. is when he actually was working a lot. And then he said, basically, it, yeah, he just didn't want to work anymore. Well, it seems like honestly, it seems like like the early 2000s is when he was, was working a lot. Like he wasn't in big stuff, but like he's consistently in like two or three movies like every year until it basically he becomes James Bond and then he yeah. slows down significantly. I'm, um, what I was going to say is that, you know, I would, and maybe he says, I don't know, maybe he's talked about why it takes so long, but like I could imagine him being like, mm-hmm. well, I just want to recoup my body. Yeah, my response would be like, I, this is what I assume he would say. I don't know. I don't, it's not a fact. But my reaction would be like, dude, Mission mm-hmm. Impossible, like, Tom Cruise is so fucking old. He's like, yeah, he's, he was banging him out for a while. He's like, still he, banging out. He gets pissed yeah. off that people are stopping him from he banging was, out Mission Impossible him for Seven. A hot minute before COVID, just so every two years, here's a new movie. Um, but we're not here for that. Mm-hmm. Even though we should do Mission Impossible at some point soon. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably just yeah, do so it in the lead the up long, to Mission Impossible Seven. Haul. So. 
Yeah, that's two. That's a two. Longer. That's a two month long. Uh, but we're uh, we have to go through. But I wouldn't mind that one because I enjoy every single Mission Impossible. I don't think I guess Ghost Protocol was probably be the one that I just I don't remember Ghost the Protocol. most. But... What's four? Ghost Protocol. Four is Ghost Protocol. That's the first one with that's Brad Bird, Baldwin though, right? and Renner in them. Yeah, Brad Bird was Ghost Protocol. I think he did Grove I think Nation. Ghost too. Protocol's good, really good. I don't mind Ghost Protocol. It's just of the Mission Impossible movies, I just think it's the one that I remember like the least about. Well, uh, like it's honest, the one I've definitely like rewatched. Number one least. and the one that just comes out recently. Like whatever, what, like whatever is Fallout, the most Fallout recent six. one. I remember that one and then the first one. I remember like yeah, okay. Parts of three and then parts of two, but I remember once. I know I can tell you. The only part I really remember about three is he's running away yeah, from a jet. I really remember that. And then he gets blown up. And he's running through I like a that, Chinese yeah. wet market or something like that, and he's got like a nuclear scene, bomb implanted like, in him or some like, shit. Tor- interrogating him or something or, or whatever at the beginning. Of the yeah. Movie. He, like, shoots somebody in front of Tom Cruise. I can't remember, but, like, yeah, like, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Like, Have you seen the trailer? Or whatnot. Have you seen and the they trailer for like... um, the new PTA movie with Hoffman's son? <clears throat> yeah, which, by the way, no, I thought I that haven't. PTA was done making movies, but I guess not. I don't know. Fans, well, the last movie unread. he did was no, the Vice, right? With maybe what? No, maybe oh, was it? Here, maybe, oh. I got confused. I don't think it was his last movie. It was fucking what's his name's last movie. Well, that was yeah. That movie Daniel was. Um, uh, but um, Daniel I didn't even watch last Phantom movie. Time. Yeah, it looked like shit to me. I didn't care about it. It was about a fashion but, um, designer. I was like, I yeah, don't care about, about this. fashion designer whose wife like is poisoning him or something, and they fall in love. Yeah, I think it was like the it was the, it was a story about whatever famous fashion brand it was. I can't remember, but it was like I I remember I like heard the name. I was like, oh, I know yeah. that brand, but I don't give well, a fuck about for like the guy who made it. So. Is out. <clears throat> it's called Li- Licorice Pizza. Yeah. Well, it just well, it just sounds That's like such a strange like a name, hipster movie. But it's a seventies. Yeah. It sounds yeah, like a movie 70s, that Max Landis like, would um, make. Romantic drama dramedy. Uh, about like a boy and like a girl and like they're he's like a he's like an actor and then and I mean the trailer the trailer looks fine and the main main actor is huh. is Philip Seymour Hoffman's son which me, leads me into thinking about today it came out today um, a, a different movie with another dead actor's son I wanted to watch this, yeah. but I have no context for the series, so like, it feels wrong for me to like boot it so up and be I like, "Hey, let me today, watch it." Which we're talking about, Many Saints in Newark, which is obviously is another dead yeah. actor's son, and and um, I think mm-hmm. they're one of their first, if not their first film film roles. I think it is and like his first film, yeah. I his will first say fa- that major film. I'm pretty sure his name is Anthony. Maybe Michael, 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 Ga- Michael, um, Gandolfini. Is it really Michael? Michael like Michael Corleone's son Michael is Gandolf- Michael Gandolfini. Okay. He is fine. He's fine in the movie. Yeah. And we're talking about the Sopranos movie. He is fine in the movie. He's perfectly fine. Okay. Any fault in the movie. There's a butt coming. There is not his fault. He's perfectly fine. I do not see Tony okay. in that character yet. I see glimpses of potential mm. Tony, but I don't see Tony yet, which is fine because he's a kid. Okay. Right? But as a whole, stupid fucking movie. A movie, and my mm. dad's a big Sopranos fan. Yeah, I think I told you a couple weeks ago. Like, mm-hmm. my dad lets me. You know this. My parents don't care. I could watch anything. But my dad, the yeah. one show I could not watch as a kid was Sopranos. So to me... I don't think okay, you ever so told me that, that he barred you from kid, watching As a kid, we've been through it before. Fucking five years old, six years old, I'm watching Robocop. I'm watching anything that's gory, bloody, action movies. I'm watching mm-hmm. it, right? As a child. Um, yeah. And that went up my... When I was even a little younger, seven, ten years old, whatever, whenever The Shield came out, 
I'm watching the shield. I'm watching the shield. He didn't care. All these things that were, he didn't give a shit about. But then I would he, he'd be watching Sopranos. He had the DVD collections. And I'm like, hey, can I watch mm. this show? Because I'm, I'm like 11 or whatever. He's like, no, you can't. Yeah. And I was like, wait, what? I'm not used to you saying no. I can't watch something because you say yes to everything. So, so now you have to watch I'm, 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 the, the Sopranos is like moving up in my mind of like, this is, has to be some top yeah. tier shit. If my dad's trying to gatekeep me from watching this thing, which, you know, again, go back to RoboCop alone. The first 20 minutes of that movie is so fucking gory and outlandish. Yeah. And there's rape vibes and Red Foreman calls prostitutes bitches and they torture fucking what's his name. So I was like, okay, yeah. my dad's telling me I can't watch this show right now. And he said right now, like not forever. He's like, you just can't watch it right now. Maybe when you're older, even yeah. though like, you know, I'm watching Godfather the same age. I'm watching Carlito's way, same mm-hmm. age. I'm watching Scarface, same age. So I'm like, what is, I'm like, yeah, that's strange that he's barring you. He's like, what you watch all these and other shows that are basically so like got, on the same wavelength? I got a little older, and by little older, I mean 13 or whatever, 14 years old. Couple, literally a couple years. A couple later. years later, just not not 10, not 11. Yeah. Just a little older teenager. He's like, I remember being like, hey, so you know, at this point, I'm already downloading movies off the internet or whatever. I'm like, hey, you know, mm. I uh, I watched the first season of Sopranos. The show's almost over at this point. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just take them. He never told me it was okay to watch them. I just brought it up a couple years later. He's like, yeah, I don't care. And I was like, okay, so what's the reasoning behind you saying that I couldn't watch the show before? He goes, oh, well, it's not about the the action. It's not about the death. It's about just the amount of sex in the show. It was too much in Uh... the sense of, like, if you watch, like, RoboCop or an action movie... It's like action movie sex. Like, you know, like Ar- Arnie's going to yeah. go in there. He's going to get laid. Then he'll go, you know, make a quote and then shoot someone or throw a pipe into somebody. But like in Sopranos, right. it's just. HBO was like the start of that with them. Like yeah. with like going super heavy on like, like the, see boobs the sexual no stuff. Reason. Yeah. Like literally they work in a strip club. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like you're just, he'll be spica- yeah. taking out money and there's tits in the background. So like I so he's like that's why it wasn't because they they whack people it's because there's a bunch of boobs and butts and whatever, you know what I mean? It's like okay, gotcha. Yeah. So I um that's sensible. I watch Many Saints in Newark today, and just it's just so irrelevant. It feels like it was just it's been too mm. long. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I think that's the strangest thing about it is yeah, because I mean, I mean, I'm not the hugest Sopranos guy obviously because i haven't watched the show yet but um but i mean it, I think it ended in like oh seven i think double o's right like before 2010 so yeah it's been over a, yeah more than a decade since the show ended so yeah it's so weird well that like now to me is my reaction to watching out. it because I'll, I'll just break it down real fast now i'm not gonna spoil anything um it's not about tony mm-hmm. Tony's in it, and the trailers make it hmm. seem as though it's about Tony, because that's how they get people in. Literally, I saw a trailer for it, not even before right. it on YouTube, a trailer on YouTube, before, just an ads, an ad roll, and right. the whole trailer's cut as though it's following Tony, right? But in the people who not. like the show can tell that it's not going to be about Tony, and you watch the movie, and it's Tony is not relevant enough to to be in the trailer he's in the movie yes and he has mm. scenes about him but he's a, such a side character it is completely mm. about uh another character's dad who is dead in the show i'm trying to think because i looked at it a little bit so it's like john bernthal and mm. Ray Liotta uh, and Colt, in it. Colt, whatever his name is, Ant Man's rival from Ant Man. Yeah, basically a lot of people that are like tangentially related to crime and mafia yeah. shows are like in this Joey Sopranos movie. No, but it's like, and those guys are all yeah. fine. 
they don't have enough time to really grow because there's not enough they're not really main characters and the guy who plays the main character is is good right and ray Liotta is whatever he's cashed feel like you feel like he's kind of cashing it in kind of just cashing checking it in whatever yeah. um i feel like that's him lately been in movie, especially like crime movies that he's in like he's just in exactly. it like you know, he was in goodfellas exactly. so exactly. you gotta put him in and it, so. i don't really feel like he's pushing any new boundaries but um he's uh um, yeah it just I, I finished the movie earlier and i just felt like this was the, a complete waste of time and mm. it's not poorly made it's just the story doesn't matter and they do a switcheroo on you that isn't completely mm. like not it's not it's not not sopranos-y but it's so like mm-hmm. okay i don't fucking care yeah, it's not I a would satisfying switcher you, you don't care. Because here's how I mean, here's I don't how, care. I don't know about my, my our Savannah, listeners. Savannah, my fiance, but... got mad at me because I watched it and she thought that I was gonna watch it with her. I was like, no, we'll watch the show together. But I'm, gonna, I'm I've been waiting for 15 years for this fucking thing. I'm gonna watch it right now. Um, but I was like, I was yeah. like, tell her, I was like, this is so irrelevant to Sopranos. It's so mm-hmm. not even like doesn't even matter to Tony's life. I mean, it's a part of Tony's life. And it's a part mm-hmm. of a character named Chris's life, but it's not like they, they, they completely base their character arcs on this. Of That's not how this is. It's just a extra story to build mm. Sopranos lore. Um, but mm. it's about Chris, who is Tony's nephew, not by blood, but by like, just mm-hmm. by friendship, <clears throat> but his dad named, mm-hmm. you no know, Dickie, whatever, Mentasanti or whatever. And the whole show, you know that he's dead. And you still know how he died. Oh, yeah, so this is the story of how he died, so basically? His dad's not there in Chris's life, and Tony kind of like helped, was there. Um, but the opening... Interesting, huh? So they show how he dies. And then the death itself is kind of like, okay, it's, it's, it is, it's completely in hmm. the realm of Soprano's realm. Of like, it's okay, I get it. But... If you're trying to just, if you've never mm-hmm. seen anything except for this, you would think this is a waste of fucking time. Because the whole reason that he mm. dies, spoiler alert again, is because he makes fun of another one of the main characters. Isn't that basically what happened to fucking what's his face in Goodfellas? He like, he like laughs. Um... Isn't that why Joe, Joe? That's like why Joe Pesci killed what's his face in Goodfellas, like because he called him what he called him. Yeah, he told him to go yeah, shiny shoebox, uh, and so then Joe yeah, Pesci well, smashed him in the what's face. What's his name? Wa- not Wasp. What's his name? What's the other Ant Man character's name? I don't know. From Ant Man. Oh. What? No, the Ant-Man? bad guy from the first movie. What's his costume called? Oh. Ant Man, Wasp, Shit, I and Hor- Hornet, Hornet, or is Yellow Hornet? Jacket. Yellow Jacket. It's probably Yellow Jacket. Okay. It's probably so. Yellow Jacket. Who, whoever oh, okay. that guy's name is. Yeah, Colt something or Colt something Bald or whatever his name is. He plays Tony's uncle, who's in the show, and he's a very like immature, okay. not immature, but sensitive kind of guy, insecure kind of guy, and mm-hmm. just seen in the in the movie where he like trips or something, and. Chris's dad like laughs at him, so that's why he gets killed. That's that's the reason. That's and, it. And in, the, in the sense of if you watch the show that's and you so kind of stupid. learn about his name is Junior, the character, it kind of makes it makes sense. It's not impossible for the character that that's that's something that he would do, but if you don't have context for Junior, it would make no sense because they downplay it so much. You'd have to really like know that that's mm. the character's arc. So like if you watched it today. You would be like, okay. You would peel the piece it together and be like, why would he do that? Like, why, why, why? And the opening of the movie is literally a, a, a long shot of a graveyard, or um, no, whatever. Mm-hmm. In the in the cameras passing by different tombstones, and you hear the voices of those people who are dead talking. And then it comes to the narration. It's narrated by in the beginning and the end by Dickie's son Chris who's from the show right but Chris dies okay. in the show 
Spoiler alert, Zach. He dies in okay. the show. Well, no, I can't watch Sopranos. Yeah, he dies in the show. That memory, so. And he explains. He's like, and he's like, come back to like us before I was born. Up, oh, this is this is this this. And he, in the beginning of the movie, spoils his own death from the show. Mm-hmm. So you like, if you oh, don't so you have never seen Sopranos, show, okay. you turn it on, you're gonna be like, what the f- okay, what okay. And you're gonna go back to watch Sopranos, and you're gonna okay. be like, "Oh, I already fucking know what happened. I already, I'm, I, I have five seasons left. I already know what fucking happens in six, season six, wherever the fuck you know. what I mean, so it really it ruins the mm. show in terms of of the Sopranos relationships. So, um, mm. yeah, I got you. It should have been a show. It should have been a show. I would have been happier. So, mm. uh, do you think 100%. it would have been better if it was like a prequel 100%. show? So, um. Mm. Hey, that's that uh, Sopranos review. We're half hour in. We're going to talk about Spectre. Now Just we're going to get to Spectre. 2015, Daniel Craig, Sam Mendes, Christ- Christoph Waltz. Spectre. Honestly, it's surprising to me that this is also directed by Sam Mendes. Because it feels... I mean, obviously, yeah. he didn't write the script, but like... The script feels very different from Skyfall, but also the, just the look of the movie is so different. Like the like the the image composition that he had, and like the shots that he used in Skyfall are like it's like non-existent in this movie. Like this movie almost makes it look like mm-hmm. a generic action movie, which I feel like when we get to the ending, I guess is one of the things that disappointed me. Which it felt like the ending was very like generic action movie as well, and I was super disappointed. Like. I got to the ending and I was like, "This doesn't feel like a James Bond ending. This feels like an ending to like yeah. a Sylvester Stallone I, um, movie." I want to preface this that when I first saw Spectre when it came out, I hated it. I don't hate it. After but... me watching it today, fresh eyes. I almost think yes. I like Quantum after rewatching this with fresh more. eyes today. I say I still hate it. I don't hate it. I definitely don't think... I think it's probably the weakest, which is... I don't know. I think the script is just really not good. And it doesn't... It's it's not that the script's bad. It's boring and mundane, and it doesn't do anything, like, interesting. Like, twists are not interesting to me. Like, the whole fact that, like, Blofeld's the secret manipulator, and we're going to retcon everything so that it was all Blofeld's idea. And I'm like... In the logic of the movies and like what I know happens, yeah, and just, it doesn't make just, any sense that it's Blofeld. Like it doesn't make any sense that he ordered Vesper's death. It doesn't yeah. make any sense that he ordered M's death. It doesn't make any sense. And they also like completely like don't acknowledge that the second movie ever happened except for like one passing remark that he makes about Green being dead. And I was like, oh, that's like the first mention of the second movie. And, and we're like two hours the fact into this. That we have to believe. Even in the world, mystical, magical world of James Bond, that the biggest yeah. anti what's the anti uh, Mission Impossible called again? Like the bad guy, the bad group of people. Oh, they're Spectre. also called Spectre. No, what's the, what's it called? Mission Impossible. Yeah. Oh, you mean what's Mission Impossible again? world? Oh, because the IMF is them, and the, what's the bad <sighs> group? What? I can't remember. Whatever it's called. They're not like, Whatever it's called. So, like, we have to believe, even in the mystical world of James Bond, that the the big, bad, biggest organization that is so powerful, all-knowing, all-controlling, all-evil, all-whatever. Okay, that's... Oh, it. they're just called the Syndicate. Um, so, that that we have to believe yeah. that, that, that this whole thing started because James Bond was a was a fucking orphan and he lived with this guy's dad and and his dad like james bond we, more than him so we and have so to believe he became that a super he's villain. been waiting 30 years 20 years for just for this yeah and it it really is a script because like i like christoph waltz and he does like okay with the material that he's given but the problem is just that like they just – what they did with no. Blofeld is not interesting to me. It's not interesting and it doesn't make any sense. And so that I think that's like the biggest problem 
that this movie has. Like, I mean, because overall, the overall plot of the movie is like, you know, it's not something we haven't seen before, but it's at least interesting of talking about like the overarching police state and like the taking overall information. Like, you know, I mean, it's a very mm-hmm. Mission Impossible plot almost. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, taking overall surveillance cameras in the world and like having control of all the information and stuff. Like, it's a very James Bond uh, bad guy plot, honestly. It feels like a an evolution of that and it feels like an evolution of what Silva was doing kind of in Skyfall. But like, that also feels like it just gets tossed to the wayside at some point so that James Bond can like mean mug at Blofeld and then... Leia Sardo's there. It's like, like both okay, of these movies, I don't care Skyfall and Spectre, ha- I have to, this is, it has to be said because it's complete stupidity. The opening movie, mm. if I complained last week about how so many of the scenes in Skyfall were pointless for no reason, which I, which I still stand by, the opening scene to this movie is fucking dumb. You're going to chase the guy to a helicopter yeah, to makes fight in a helicopter suit just so you can fly away and have his ring. Just beat him up when he forget shoot him. Yeah. You're James Bond. You tell me you have one yeah. gun? Well, first of all, before we even get to that, um, you're a secret agent. You know what you need to do. Why the fuck are you pointing a laser sight yeah. at glass when you know yeah. that glass reflects lasers? Like you know it's gonna give away your position. Why the fuck are you turning your laser no. sight on? You're not even no, that far you away perfect- that you need the laser sight. You're James Bond. You're like also, a 10 out of 10 marksman. Why are you, why the fuck are you having to do side? that when you know the guy who stands out? Like this, I mean, the, the, it happens in the script because otherwise yeah. there would be no plot yeah. and there'd be no inciting action. But and even that, like, okay, that, even that. It. But it's a stupid reason for even that. Okay, all fine. that other stuff to happen. Because as a secret agent, he should and know also not the obvious turn the like, laser These guys are in black. They're going to be clearly, they're, they're already there. I see the guy who's in white walk yeah. in. Okay, maybe shoot the guy in white. Okay, fine. Give you that. You chase him, and instead of kicking his legs out from him and taking the ring, you push him into the plane. Yeah. Okay, besides that point, James Bond always has yeah. the handgun. That's his fucking side weapon. So why would you... He, you're telling me he doesn't have yeah. that gun on him as well? He just walked out. Oh, he lost it when the building collapsed. I saw him the whole time. Now, if you would have shown I don't think he lost him it. falling and jumping, the gun falls out, he go, looks at it, oh, okay, gun's gone. Okay, fine. Okay, helicopter scene, maybe I can grant, grant it to make sense. Other than that, it serves yeah. zero purpose but a stupid spot, which is what I call in rep professional wrestling, a stupid high spot for no reason. It serves the story zero. Yeah, I mean, it's... Just, it's, it's... All of the logic is so that they can have this action set piece that overall is pointless and doesn't make a lot of sense. And it also is just like, I felt like this movie more than any one that I've seen for so far, at least I noticed it more than any movie I'd seen so far, like relied too much Mm -hmm. on the CGI to like make their set pieces, which for me is boring, which is why I love Mission Impossible so much because that shit's all practical and you know that Tom Cruise is really doing all that shit. So you know that like this is stuff that he can do in real life. But I don't know, like knowing that he Daniel Craig is on a green screen and the building that is collapsing around him is not collapsing around him. So like why do I I, I don't feel any tension because whoever they hired to do the effects didn't do a good enough job to, yeah. job to make it look realistic. Um it just doesn't like it immediately pulled yeah. me out of the movie. I was like, I don't care about and this. Then it just so many of the scenes just seem like irrelevant to the whole story and even and then which is fine yeah. because the story itself is terrible the story in itself is garbage let's go back to the fact that the arch enemy of mi5 is not the arch enemy of m it's the arch enemy of james bond from yeah. when you're fucking 15 years old this is the equivalent this is this no, is the less equivalent. Than, like seven or eight or something. Not from they the picture like of the newspaper. That dude looked like he was 15 years old. Well, I think Blofeld was older than him, but I think James, James Bond, Bond I think was, was 12. Like younger. So they said that he lost his parents when they were young and like he went to live but with Blofeld like right after his parents died. So. Said his, that burnt folder from Skyfall? When he's in this... No. See, I, I, I could, couldn't read it that. It says it was 12 so years. Small. You could read I that? I don't know if that meant like 
he stayed there with 12 years or he's 12 years old? I didn't, I couldn't see. I don't think he stayed yeah. there. He must have been 12 years old because I don't think he stayed there for 12 years because right. Brofeld so said he was, he was only there for like a couple of years. There. I feel like he, well, I thought he would have been the, younger. So the way they acted, they they always make it act like he was yeah. like six or seven years old when, he, when his parents died. In the, in the newspaper, like he was 15. So I think yeah, he was like 12 and 15. Well, also, first of all, can we talk about the pictures of Blofeld as a kid? Because yeah. it's just Christoph Waltz's face. Like, it doesn't look like a young kid. It just looks like Christoph Waltz's face yeah. plastered on the body but of a 15-year-old. Also, in the scene where they he finds Spectre, which is stupid. The meeting scene, the which is meeting scene? stupid. Yeah. And why would the super secret organization have a meeting there? They wouldn't. They would be in a building like any other organization. No, Zach. Yeah, I guess they'd be in a building with key cards. I mean, in the logic, in the in the stupid magical, goofy, goofy logic of James Bond, they had the meeting there because they knew that James Bond was going to show up, so that they could have which that confrontation where he sees stupid. James Bond. So it's stupid. The logic then, of this movie well, is and not then good. James Bond sees Blofeld's face. It has the realization, and. The re- and the then nobody reality believes that, him for some reason. That they build decides to believe they him. Went, they chose to go that route with the fucking movie. It's the it's the same exact thing yeah. about Superman and Batman having Martha as a mom. It's the exact same level yeah. of fucking dumb. Yeah, I don't. I really don't know why they. Because I don't think they are like in the traditional canon of James Bond. I don't think, like, him and Blofeld are, like, related at all. So I don't know why they went through this aspect of, like, they knew each other since childhood. And, like, he had – Blofeld has some weird, like, kid-like hatred for him because his daddy liked him more than he did. Like, that's – it's just such – it's so strange. It's just very strange. Completely zero sense. And in no good story sense. Well, I, not even outside of the fact of like it not making sense. It's just not interesting. Like even it, like I could forgive it if like it was a dynamic that was like interesting and like can't make, engage in the movie. But like they revealed that and I was like, I don't care. Like I do not care at all that like they're related together. Because like, first of all, this rela- – they act like this revelation has been built upon with three movies, but really they just dump you and they dump it in your lap in this movie. So there's no real build up to it at all in this movie. So it doesn't, they're trying to like put this like gravitas and weight to it. That is just not there because there's no yeah. hints that anything like this mm-hmm. could like even be possible yeah. in past movies. So I don't know how I'm supposed to like, I don't know. It probably still wouldn't be that satisfying even if there was, like, a hint of it. But, like, the fact that they, like, act like it's this, like, big, weighty revelation that's been made in the James Bond universe. What? Yeah. When there's, like, no indication to me, it's the, what to makes it, it is... so awkward and unbelievable, besides the fact that it's a movie, obviously. But in terms of bad storytelling and bad writing, it's like you have this mm-hmm. world-spanning organization and then you want to pinpoint, dial and focus the connection between these two people. It could be, it could be, it should mm. and could and, and was purely based on the fact that he's a spy. He's a spy master. He is the anti-M. Yeah. So by nature, by nature of the well, job, I mean, he would be the anti-Bond. Kind of... he's, the, he's the anti-M. Yeah, well, I mean, the the original... What is it? The original relationship between them that they kind of laid out before he dumped all the fact that, like, he knew him as a kid or whatnot, where he's just like, Bond's mm. interfering in what he's trying to do, so he interferes back in Bond's. Like, that, that is a dynamic that's interesting, at least, in some way, because there's, like, a push that, and pull and, then, like... Just kill him so he stops interfering. Why are you killing his girlfriends? <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't make a whole... Well, I mean, it just goes back to the fact that, like, I don't believe that he ordered... It just goes back to the fact that I don't believe that he ordered these women to be killed because those other characters had reasons for why... I guess the only one that I could maybe see with was Vesterer because the whole quantum thing, like, that I could kind of see, but, like, 
I don't believe that yeah. he ordered the death of M go, because well, that's all Silva that... shit. Like, he, Silva had a clear and precise reason for wanting to kill M. So I don't believe you when he's like, well, I ordered back to the M fact dead. That the writers thought they were being sneaky by being like, okay, we can't just purely write Bond as a you know, playboy. So we'll have to have him have like a downside to him yeah. being a flirt. So we'll just kill the ladies. <laughs> like, that's the reasoning. And then to try to retcon it by being like, oh, I yeah. killed them f- because you got in my way. How about just kill James Bond? What's the point? Make him more mad so he come yeah. back. And he, he, you, you, okay, here's how dumb Blofeld is that this is logic that they gave us. Okay. Yeah. You got in my way with Lashif. I killed your girlfriend. All right. Okay. That should have been the end yeah. of it. Oh, you got back in my way. I kill your other girlfriend. Oh, you're still mad? Okay, I kill your third girlfriend. I threaten your neck. I threaten you're your You're still next mad? Man. I kill your mom. Clearly doesn't work. Clearly it's not working, Blofeld. Just kill James Bond because clearly yeah. you could have all this stuff going on. It goes back to it goes back to the last movie. Well, I mean, and Blofeld even acknowledges that it's not really a thing where he talks about the fact that he's like, oh, yeah, all the women's faces are indistinguishable to you. And he's like... If you know that he's like that with these women, then why do you think that killing yeah. these women is going to stop him or yeah, hurt him in any real way? Too, like just with last movie with um, Javier Bardem, at any point he could have killed them. Mm. In this movie, he shows you, Blofeld shows us, at any given point he could have killed Bond. At any given point he could have yeah. chosen to kill Bond and did it for no good storytelling reason. Purely on the fact that yeah. Bond will be tortured, soul, the tortured soul, and then they have to meet. But even then, it's not good enough to justify the movie. It should have just been purely yeah. this. Blofeld is the bad version of M. Because he's a, he's a spy master who does bad stuff for money. Bond's job is to catch the bad spy. Like Ethan does with the Rogue Nation or whatever the fuck. With the Syndicate. Ethan has no personal connection yeah. to them unless he unless they work with him. Yeah, but I guess in my in in that respect, like they already did that because Silva yes. was the anti Bond. So they already the did difference that between that two is that so, they chose to go the personal route with him. Him his his mission was M. Yeah. Blofeld's mission should not be yeah. one person. It should be the government of England. I'm trying to attack the government yeah. of England so I can get control of their systems for intelligence. So I can use yeah. that for my in my own bidding. I have no personal qualm with Ralph Fine or fucking Q or James Bond. You're in my way. I am too powerful, all knowing, yeah. almighty, all knowing of a spy master to care about you, you puny double O. That's how they should have played it. Yeah. Not not hey, you and me live together in Austria and my dad liked you more. That makes this guy be, he's so big yeah. and powerful and they show you all the things he has. I have computer tap camera wires into MI5 so we can see M do the speech. But then he has a fucking bitchy, mm. whiny reason to even do all this and kill Bond. It makes, it ruins his character arc of yeah. being a cool bad guy. Just be a cool yeah. bad guy and say you want world domination. Just go that way. You don't have to go this personal yeah. connection route. Those are the best Bond villains, man. They just the want simple as this. Why do you want to rule the world? I want to be rich. I want to have all the money in the world. I want to have all the power. Versus, I want to power. Versus, I want to rule oh, the world. I want to be at the top of every single government. You. It's stupid. It's stupid writing. Because again, it goes back yeah. to the fact that if he could hack into MI5 and watch their security cams, which they show us, what stopped you from killing Bond yeah. when he was 15 years old? 16 years old. You killed your dad when you were 15. Why couldn't you kill yeah. Bond? Why would you let Bond go to the military, get trained, special forces, yeah. become a double O, become an assassin, and do all this stuff instead of just killing him? I guess the thing that that I guess you could say that they were both like rising in power at that point. Like he probably didn't have the Spectre organization on hand where he could track James Bond wherever where he was at. So I would the assumption which is, is not spelled out. This is clearly my assumption and what I am guessing is that they were both rising in power at the same time. And they probably, he probably didn't realize that James Bond even existed anymore until. Well, clearly he, cared, he killed his dad purely for liking up. Bond more. So kill your dad in the avalanche. Yeah. That bit's also not explained well either because then they make the, so they have yeah. the stupid analogy with the cuckoo yeah. birds 
But in that analogy, they're like, the cuckoo birds mm-hmm. kill all the other eggs in the net. Okay, in that analogy, then, yeah. he would kill James Bond. Yeah. Because James Bond's the other egg. Like, that's what... You, I don't okay, understand you kill your dad like, why you're you killing your dad. You kill your dad, you kill your dad, your dad fine. Dad, makes sense. And then you, when you get hidden, you walk back to your house, and then you fucking kill Bond. It makes no sense. And also, uh, I'm if in the next movie that we see next weekend, right... What is yeah. the over under of another of Rami Malek giving us an animal metaphor? I don't think he's because in the trailer he borrowed. He basically said that he's going to give us the disease no, metaphor. I'm, but do you think that humanity we're get is like an a animal disease. metaphor in that movie? G- yes. Do I think we're going to get because one at had all? One this yeah, movie. Probably. We had one last movie. The rats. Oh yeah, we had the rats. No, no, no. The we didn't have one in the second this movie. movie. Started with Skyfall. I'm pretty sure. So we had the rat speech, and now we had the cuckoo speech. I don't remember what's what next. Movie. The cheetah speech. I don't know. Is it gonna be? Is it the same you know, writers? The same writers. Same writers. Actually. We're definitely getting one. This 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 dude thinks he's Hold so on. smart by having a fucking animal metaphor, an animal like symbolism fucking. You know when those when you when you have my grandma told me about the rats on the island they want coconut you dig a hole and you put them in the hole and you throw a coconut in there. Oh, you know, hold on, but then James Bond didn't get his cool action line like he did the Skyfall yeah. where he said "last rat standing," whatever the fuck he said. He didn't get like push yeah. you out of the net b- nest, bitch, and like shot or he could because then he didn't kill him. Been like he didn't fucking kill him. You grabbed my wing. I pull you. You flew, you learn to fly or some dumb shit. I don't know because I also. I mean, getting back to what I alluded to earlier, I didn't like the ending of this movie because the ending felt generic action movie where he's like, "No, yeah. I'm a good person now," and I'm like, "I already watched you quit MI6 and then you just came back. So why are you, you trying have... to like give me this fake out right now?" Also. I don't know time to die also, is coming. Stop trying to fake me out. MI6 so many times. Yeah, I don't like... This is probably the fact that I like the least about Daniel Craig's Bond is like every leaving single MI, movie is like off. leaving MI6. That's like his generic character trait in like all of these movies. Except for Casino Royale. Well, end. Casino Royale, he leaves at the end. So yeah, at every single movie, he it starts off with these like... I'm not an MI6 anymore. And yeah. I'm like, how many times are we going to do this? How many times are we going to do this where he's left a secret agency and he's like, and, and what? I just want him to start off this movie. He's and like, they just they when I thought I was, they, I was out, they pulled it's, me back. It is in. so aggravating because the writing uh, in the last two movies has been so atrocious yeah. for all of it. I really don't mind the writing. I, I don't think the writing in three is atrocious. I think the the lead the set pieces are atrocious, which I mean the writing is part of that. But I think the overall story of Skyfall I like a lot. I think a lot of like the internal logic of like how they get from point A to point B doesn't make a lot of sense. But, but the Zach, overall arching story between like Silva and M and like yeah, the Zach, Bond versus anti Bond. All those, thing, those I like all those a lot. like logical motions from point A to point B to point C, that's called the movie. Which is which that's is called the, movie. the journey. The movie is Because we know No, there's, no, there's a beginning and end point. There's the, a climax the reality, falling action. But the, the, there's the reality is this, dude. Trait, there's the reality is this about about the James Bond movie. Not one time in any of these movies do you go, huh, what's gonna happen to Bond? I mean, I did think that in Casino Royale when I thought he was going to lose his Never, penis. I was like, Never oh, damn, he's about to lose not, his not penis. Not once would it happen, right? So. He definitely got sure. whacked in the balls sure. like a good five times. But the times. idea that. The he idea that we're going to ignore the journey in a movie where the journey is all that matters because the ending is always finite. The ending is always yeah. finite. Right? Even in this next movie, he's not going to die. Because he's going to live off and happily yeah, ever after with his not. girlfriend. Who, by the way, why are you happy with her? Makes no sense. 
makes no sense in James Bond world. I don't know. And then she's back in this movie. She's back in No Time to Die. Same chick. And now she's got, like, some hidden past. Yeah. Shit is, like... So, opening of the movie, the opening chase scene, I want to give the movie some props. Because there's not many. And this 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 next thing is the also opening not a chase scene. It's not, also not not a positive, but the opening the scene Mexico of City them stuff? walking through the crowd, the oneer, the fake oneer, the fake oneer, the oneer into, into not the bad. bedroom. Yeah. He kisses the girl. Oh yeah, no, he, there's definitely well, a lot yeah, of obviously cuts kisses the girl. Thing. She gets in the bed, it cuts back away, and he's out of the suit in the other suit, and then walks along the thing. I mean, yeah. that's some cartoon level logic where he's like, okay, so you were just yeah. wearing a whole nother suit underneath your suit? Like, what the, the hell edge, is this? Which, for the record, you're a spy with a gun in your hand. You would probably walk, I don't know, <laughs> not on the edge. A little and not then you on the edge? walk up to a building, perfect placement. I know that's probably MI5's planning, whatever, fine. But. Well, no, it's not, because yeah. th- this is him. So the idea. He went rogue. So it's not. Perfect planning. He just the happened to have the perfect none. angle. Let me, let me be clear here, Zach. I want to say this slowly so that everyone can hear the words coming out of my mouth. All of these bad guys in these movies need to invest in something called blinds. Because this is the third movie now where we have Bond peering through glass. Two movies back to back. Well, not even blinds. They just need to like no, no, no. turn just, their heads just slightly. Close sometimes. the fucking blinds, because then now Bond's gonna do this. <laughs> How's he gonna hit you? Well, also, hold on, because that's another. That just made me think of another thing, which is, he's like, yeah, listening in on them talk in that. Oh, how the fuck? Uh, where did he get a bug? Gun. When did he plant a bug in there? I, That's so not don't explained. explain it, but he puts the he, yes, it's a so his gun has a gun microphone. Well. That's why he's that's why he's pointing it at the at the thing of doing this, so he can hear him. Now, why it also is mm. an actual gun? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why he, the Q or whoever. Why does it have a laser sight? Daylight? When he doesn't need a laser sight, why. we'll um, never know. That helicopter scene. I'm just gonna go through them. Helicopter scene, stupid. Fly away, all nice and happy, dumb. Also, real quick, sorry, bring it back, rewind it. Rewind it at the beginning. Fly away all nice and happy. Where'd that yeah, where that? Like, oh, you mean at the end of the helicopter. Right. Bring it back, actually, sorry. Bring it back to the beginning of the yeah. movie. Why the fuck is this the first movie where they do the opening little vignette with the gun in the in the circles? Mm-hmm. Why? This is the first oh, movie. Oh yeah, they, they do didn't it. do it. Why? No, like they, they yeah, didn't they do, didn't it, in do this it. movie. No, with the vignette. Yeah, with this, the this is the first movie that actually has the... it, correct? No, this one does have it too. The other ones had it. Yeah, this one has it. I don't I think the other it. ones have it. When did it happen? Do the other one? He's just walking and then when shoots it. When it happened, the gun. I don't. Hold I don't on. think Am the I other even... movies, I don't remember them having the opening black and white circle scene and then he turns and shoots the screen. Well, the Casino Royale did because the Casino Royale, they had it where it was after the, the guy in the bathroom like stood up and he like did the turn and he no, shot no, no, the no, thing. Zach, I'm talking about the traditional Bond, bum, 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 bum far away shot and Bond's walking and then white circle, pew. Right. It's in this movie. I didn't see that this movie. It's in this movie. I don't think the other ones have that. I don't remember it. The other ones have it. Like the other ones have variations. Oh, so on this it, but this they is this is the that scene. opening one. This is like the the real the Bond one, like the classic Bond, fucking, you know. What you mean? Yes. It literally starts the movie with it. Hold on. Where am I at? I'm trying. I don't. I don't know. I don't even think that's that big of a deal anyways, but I don't, I don't know. I found that incredibly, I wish it was incorporated more. Like I like the way Casino Royale did it. 
Like it's actually like incorporated to be no, like so part of a scene. Those movies did that. Yes, I'm saying this is the this is the only movie that has the um, gun hip, gun barrel sequence. You're talking about when he's when yes. you're like looking through the barrel of the gun and he's yes. like walking. This is and the then only movie that does have yeah. that in this in so far. This is the only one. I don't remember Here, seeing I'll send this, you the link this right movie. Now. Go to YouTube and type in Spectre Gun Barrel Sequence. Hmm. I guess I just yeah. missed it. Yeah, I guess I just missed it. Let's see if there's a... Let's see, hold on, let me double check. Because I think Quantum Assault like ended with it. I think Casino Royale had it twice. Casino Royale had the one at the beginning where it like, uh, where it was like actually a part of the scene, and I think it had like the traditional one like at the end of the movie. I think Quantum Assault had it yeah, like at the end. Yeah, don't of the they? Because don't aren't they usually I can't remember what it was in the, the beginning of the movie? I have no idea where they're normally placed at. I think that they're normally... Or at the end. I think they're normally at the end of the movie. I don't know. That's what I'm saying, because I don't, I, I really I don't, don't watch know. credits. So if, I, if I, I skip them, so if they're in the other movies, which they I think they are I, from just from YouTube, I don't see them because I just don't watch credits, because I, I have yeah. them when I watch credits. Um, but let's see. Hold on. James yeah. Bond, Gone Barrel sequence opening or closing or is it random gun barrel sequence let's see maybe it's random placement okay so that's in every bond movie that's what they said it is the first time since die another day that a bomb film has opened with a gun barrel so yeah this is the first one since pierce Brosnan. So that makes that sense to me because that's the last one that i saw Besides watching a movie, one of the old movies. Yeah. So, um, hmm. but yeah, I, I remember seeing that. I remember I was like, oh man, this is the first time they did that because I, I haven't seen them in the other movies because clearly now we know that they're they're yeah, at the end. Yeah, because Skyfall happened at the end. Quantum of Solace. I don't know where it happened. In... Yeah, I I, it has to be at the end. Quantum of Solace was at the end. It has to be at the end. Yeah, because I, I didn't see them. And I... And yeah, I think Casino Royale had two. So, um. So that part, but then you could flash forward back to the helicopter stuff, and in that whole sequence back in England, back in London, it's just like none of it is good writing enough to make me like, okay, why are you in? De- why why does it matter he went to Mexico? He's supposed to chase this or not? No, why? There's a merger of the, these groups. How? Why? How did that even happen? How are you even there? You're a secret spy organization. And even if you're part of the government, hey, just don't be. Because the IMF is not. Yeah, they don't. They're, they're not. They're, they have CIA assets, but they don't fucking. You can't control them. So even in the Bond world of like, I do what the fuck I want well, for double O's. I mean, they kind of get controlled because that's the whole point of what happens in Rogue yeah, Nation, it's where they and shit, yeah. get they shut down IMF and then they have to go rogue. Yeah, or but no but Ghost Protocol. It's that's the idea I... that we are the tip of the spear for British intelligence. Yeah. And from two movies in a row, we're now being tested about if field work is relevant. And even though we've proven that every movie since... Field work is still relevant since in the world Connery, of James Bond. Since yeah. Connor, we've proven it every movie. And to me, it is such a dumb idea to do again. Back to yeah, back. Yeah, it feels weird that they... I don't know. It, I mean, it, I, I think it goes to what we were hitting at earlier, which is that this movie is a lot of recycled ideas and themes from... Yeah. Skyfall, which well, it's, is the, it's the same so theme, right? It's the same theme. It's a personal story, just like Skyfall was. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like a lot of a lot of, like a lot of it is just recycled stuff from Skyfall. Because my like, hope was the whole plot resembling around like yeah, like a personal struggle, and then the, also the overarching plot having to deal with you know spy spy warfare in the information age and like yeah. how that's changed and all that shit and. 
yeah, like, you know, MI6 being considered relevant, James Bond being out of touch and yeah. old. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of it's recycled. And stuff. all those, and even the, the big fight Which is scene. probably what adds to it also being boring and uninteresting because I just watched a better movie that did all of those themes better. And, and the, even the main fight scene with Mr. Hanks, or whatever his name is, Dave Batista. I just yeah. don't care. I don't care about why are you chasing Bond? Why? You're a hitman for the Spectre? Why do you care? Why? Well, he's a character that doesn't say anything until he says, oh shit, because he yeah. died. The, even the idea of like, okay, you kill a guy so you can take the seat. Is that seat always hitman? Then how come James Bond easily killed the other guy? Yeah. Why does it matter? You know, it doesn't it, make it doesn't give sense. me any progress. It doesn't give me a reason to care about your character or if you live or die. Because I know you're going to die because you ain't going to live. Yeah. Right? Um, the fight scene was kind of boring, uh, but kind of a boring way to die. Uh, which, that's by the way, I should be a James Bond movie. <laughs> boring way to die. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't care about the girl relationship. I don't care about Mr. White being back in it. I don't care about Mr. White dying. They, like you said at the beginning, which we, which is my initial reaction to actually Inspector, which was like, okay, we're just going to try to retroactively tie in everything together, which is a mistake because there's two, there's just no, not enough threads in the other movies. Yeah. I mean, the only ones that you could kind of tangentially connect were – if they probably focused on, like, just the quantum stuff, they probably could have made it tie in a little better because yeah. the first two movies do connect together pretty well. But then you, like, tie in all the Silva stuff, and, like, that doesn't – it doesn't connect, so it just makes everything else fall apart. And also being, like, with how easy Bond found Green and Le Chief, Yeah. they work for Spectre. They're one of the tentacles that they draw. Well, that's the other problem that I have is that, like, this organization, this whole movie is like, we had that secret organization, but there's a bigger secret organization that's on top of it. Yeah. Bet you didn't see that coming. Well, it's okay. The point being, like, okay, if if they sh- the, the Q has that stupid animation, which, why the fuck would you make that in your hotel room? But he's like, Le Chief, and then uh, Green, all his people... And he has the, the pictures of them, and then it turns into the shape of the specter. And then it has oh, yeah. at the top. Okay, why would you make that? That's dumb, because you're not an animator, but fine. Um, well, I think you just put it on top of the ring picture that he had. Well, it was, like, it was like... Yeah. Okay, um, dude, that's just movie shit. Because reality, you would have did this. Picture, 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 picture. Right? Yeah. So, if Lashif and all these people are different arms of specter, right? Now, they don't explain this, but this is the way I pick, I took it. That round table, that lady reading off the stuff, and that black guy, those are the people that replaced those dead members of the... That's the, what the I board, would assume, yeah. Right? So, how come we don't care about them? Because we care about those people in those roles two movies ago, and if they're so secretive and so all-knowing and so all-powerful and all, so all-secretive, how come Bond could find them, and so could fucking Felix? They work for Spectre, Correct. Well, I would assume, I mean, the first movie, you know, with the poker tournament stuff, like, he's not trying to hide. Like, it's a high-stakes poker tournament that is, like, invite only with, like, all these different people. Like, he's not trying to hide it, necessarily. Well, the The point is that they, I don't know how he's able to find quantum stuff. The the point is that they have his name in the database. I don't know. You shouldn't be there, because you're supposed to be working for Spectre. I don't have these answers. But like, just think like think about right the writing to be like, okay, we work for the secret organization where we can hack anything and blow up anything and get all this information. But our one of our finance guys, because the chief was a finance guy. Yeah, he's a numbers guy. He uh, everyone can find him. Anyone can get to him. Uh It's dumb. Uh he has all our budget, all our I'm money. I'm trying to think of, like, the context of, like, the first movie, like, it really wasn't, like, any, like, I mean, that... they had to do, like, a decent amount of work to get to the fact that they were in that, po- like, they had to, like, there's a lot of ramp up to them, like, finding the sheep. It's not like they just, like, popped no, up wherever, Zach, and, like, the sheep's there. That's great. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, I have to, in the context of these movies, like, it's not like he's just easy to find. I mean, compared like you're to... you're saying in the context of this movie, but I'm saying in the context of like this series as a whole. No, the point is that we now cannot look at that movie by itself because uh, Spectre is telling us that that he was all this was all planned by 
Blofeld. So now Blofeld's saying all of that was part of a Spectre plan. He worked. He was one of our people. All these people that were working, that desert building, all that shit's us. It's all us. It's all us. It's all us. Okay. The why the motherfuck would you let your top finance guy, or even if he's not top one, clearly he's one of them because you care enough to put him on the fucking Spectre leg. He's so easy to find in the context of you being Spectre. In the context of him being Le Chief, Okay, fine. He, Bond worked hard to find him. His name was in the database. We didn't have a picture for him, but we found, we found him. We got him. Because they pulled him up in the database. We found him. Now yeah. we know, where he, we know where he, he's a person. We know who he is. Right? Yeah. But in the context of him now being a member of Spectre, it should be no picture, just a name. We couldn't find him. It took, well, it took three movies to fucking find him because he works for a guy who can hack into MI5. Live I feed mean, from MI5. I could still judge those movies by themselves, but I mean, I think it goes into the internal logic of like, I just, it goes back to the thing that we just keep circling around, which is them tying stuff together does not strengthen this movie. It just weakens it. And it doesn't make yeah. sense in the, the logical consistencies that they try to establish by connecting all this stuff together. It does not hold and it all falls apart. Well, and that's why no time to die is going to immediately suffer. Yeah, because, probably. Because they're already explaining that. that this, I mean, it that depends how much they actually lean into the Spectre stuff. Enough uh, to have got, him in the trailer, right? Well, they've got him. You know, they've got some fucking yeah. conversation. My guess is that's like a one and done thing that happens for some fucking reason. But my guess is that's going to be. A my hit. guess is that Rami Malek's character was part of Spectre for yes, some reason. Yes, absolutely. Like, my guess off. is that it's a Hannibal Lecter moment. There's a guy terrorizing Maybe. the world, and we can't find him. Go to Blofeld. Oh, one of my guys is terrorizing the world, oh, Bond. You mean a Silence of the Lambs moment? Okay. Well, Hannibal Lecter, yeah, Hannibal Lecter scene. That, that happens in all the movies. Happens, yeah. Once you've got the bad guy captured, like yeah. it, ha it happens in it, Red. It happens once you in, didn't shoot him in the head, then well, yeah, that, like, it happens in Red Dragon where yeah. he, he, he Will Graham goes and talks to him. It, it doesn't happen in Hannibal Lecter. Well, Hannibal. that's about Hannibal growing. That's about him by his life. You know. Yeah. Let's not even talk about the actual book version of the sequel to Hannibal Lecter, the Silence of the Lambs, because the sequel is terrible. The Hannibal, the actual book sequel? This book sequel to Silence of the Lambs is about yeah. how she ends up marrying him. Yeah, I think I read that in the Wikipedia or whatever. Because I watched those terrible. movies, not Red Dragon, but I watched Silence and Hannibal like a, a little over a month ago. Yeah. And I was like... Silence of the Lambs, still really good. No, it's fantastic. Hannibal, movie. not so no. good. <laughs> Silence is fantastic. We should do. Is Although Gary our... Oldman is great at playing a deformed person. No, you should. You need to go things. watch Manhunter now. Me? Yeah. Yeah. You okay. should watch Manhunter. Because it's better than Red Dragon. I didn't. What Red Dragon was the one I didn't watch, but. Oh, you didn't watch Red Dragon. No, I watched Silence and Hannibal. Yeah. Okay, well then go. Don't watch Red Dragon. Watch Don't Man, watch Red Dragon. Watch Manhunter and then watch Red Dragon. Because mm. it's the same story. Oh. Just one's okay. Michael Mann from the 80s and one's not. Okay. And it depends on which Will Graham you prefer. The guy from CSI, which I prefer. Or, um, what's his name from fucking Fight Club? Oh, uh, Edward Norton. Edward Norton, yeah. CSI. He plays uh, the main guy, the white guy, the bug guy. Oh, um, yeah, Grissom. Grissom, yeah. He plays Will Graham in the Manhunter. In which one? Manhunter. Oh, in Manhunter. Yeah. Oh. Manhunter is just Red Dragon for a new name. I did not know that. Yeah, Manhunter is. I'm saying it's Manhunter is Red Dragon, but but eighties. You know what? I kept thinking when you kept saying Manhunter. I thought you were telling me to watch Mindhunter. No. My, I was Manhunter. Like, why does he keep telling me to watch my Like, it is not the same as Red Dragon. Manhunter is Michael Mann from Miami Vice and okay. all the great movies. But it's Red you. Dragon. I'm, uh, I'm on your wavelength yeah. now. I don't know why I and kept thinking of Mindhunter. Red Dragon but... is the exact same thing based on the book. The exact same story, just not 80s. With, you know, 2000s aesthetics. Okay. You know, but I prefer Manhunter. Wait, Man who Hunter. plays Hannibal in Manhunter? 
I couldn't even tell you the actor's name. Mm. I couldn't even tell you. He can't be as good as... This is different. Interesting. This is different. Because even if you read the, the book of Red, Red Dragon, mm -hmm. I don't even see um, Anthony Hopkins in the book when I read it. You don't? Like, the way that the way that it's he's described and talked about, and like, he talks in the book. Because I, I was reading it recently. Mm -hmm. I don't picture... Um, I don't picture um, Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins in that in that shit. You know, um, actually, I was literally looking at it. Hey, look, I was literally looking at it like a few recently in my most huh. rec in my most recent reads. I don't picture him, even with Will Graham. I don't picture Will Graham either, uh, as as any of the Will Grahams when we get. Um, but to to hold on, I want to end this real quick. End Sky, uh, Spectre real fast. Mm -hmm. To me, there is really nothing redeeming about the movie because even the way it's even though it's, yeah. sh it's shot fine it's kind of boring cinematography well that's what i'm yeah that's what i'm talking about i mean i don't think there's anything redeeming because for me overall when i got to the end of the movie it just felt like a generic action movie like it didn't feel yeah. like a bond movie yeah. and there's nothing as both of us who have watched red letter media know and as both being you know avid movie consumers that's not, there's nothing worse than a generic you know, mediocre like, movie. When I pull out, you know, the Bond movies. Yeah. And I just like look at them. And because obviously we've already mentioned this before, like mm -hmm. the Craig movies are a whole new breed. Yeah. For Bond. And that's obviously been the goal. But like when mm -hmm. I look at like the list of movies, like they're not action movies in the way that we know them today. But they no. have what's called style. Yeah. And this movie lacks any sort of style. It really lacks individuality. <laughs> which is just so... Oh, that's... It's just really surprising. It's like I said at the beginning. It's just very surprising that it's a Sam Mendes movie. Because it doesn't really feel like it has his fingerprints on it at all. Like, it doesn't feel like a Sam Mendes movie. It feels also, like a generic action movie. How every Bond has a pistol except for Craig. Yeah, he's got his... Well, he's got the iconic thing from the end of Casino Royale, yeah. Yeah, he should have a pistol, though. Yeah, he should. He's got a pistol most of the other time, which is also... Hold on. Speaking of him having a pistol, how the fuck is he able to shoot down a helicopter? Hey. Hey. No. 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 <laughs> Stupid. If James Bond can shoot down if it took him two pistols to no. take down the helicopter, there's no reason if, he should take down the helicopter. If James Bond can shoot down a helicopter from a moving boat, then Blofeld could have killed Bond whenever he wanted. It makes it makes no sense. It makes no sense. So now I'm, now before we move on to the last last part of the podcast, let me end it for the week. I want to ask you this, Zach. So we had this on record. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting from... Oh, by the way, if I was going to rate this movie out of 10, 3 out of 10. I think it's like a 4. If I was going to give it out of 5, 1 out of 5. I think it's like a 4 out of 10 for me. Yeah, 40%. Yeah. So, but uh, I want to ask you, since we're a week out, predictions expectations what do you want to see what do you not want to see do you have any hopes dreams for no time to die and the whitest asian director of all time i want to see a decent story that doesn't make me feel like they're jumping through a bunch of hoops to get from point a to point b yeah I want to see something that makes chronological sense and act Act set pieces that make sense in the context of the story and like where the story is ramping up to. Yeah. And I want to see practical action set pieces. Yeah. Because I think that's the no. I think that's the number one thing that hurts me on this movie the, the most. Because at least with like Quantum, like as you know, as much as we talked about that movie and like how like kind of like bland it is, at least like the action and like the set pieces and the fight scenes were like practical and felt like they had like real weight to them. Like when they're in the end and they're in a hotel that's like on fire 
it looks like they're in a hotel on fire, even though it probably isn't because there probably is like CGI fire in there. It at least looks yeah. real enough. Unlike this movie where like I saw a building explode and I'm like, those are all just CGI rocks. Right, 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 right. See, I don't even want, I would love that. I would love all that stuff you're talking about. I want something even simpler. Okay. I just want a good story. I well, want, yeah, I want right. a I want a solid story with an ending to Bond's journey that can wrap up the bullshit that we got the last two movies, especially after Spectre, with just which just ruins the other three movies in terms of yeah. making sense. Because now we're watching it as a whole, so I don't want it. I don't want it to be Jason Bourne. I want yeah. it to be Bourne Ultimatum. I want it to be. Bond runs away and jumps in the water and he thinks he's dead and then that song kicks in and he starts seeing him swim. I just want it to be something that's cohesive in the ending. I don't need you to tie I don't need them to be like, okay, we're gonna tie we're gonna tie into boop, 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 all other movies. Because you can't yeah. do it. There's not enough threads in those movies. I also either. don't understand why they felt the need to do it with these movies. Like with yeah. the first and second movie and now with like the fourth movie like tying into the other I just don't know on I don't understand why they have this obsessive need to like tie everything together. I mean, I assume that it's them trying to get on like the cinematic universe yeah. shit, but like James Bond is not a cinematic universe. Like it's yeah. just a character that you tell stories around. Now, and no now, other Bond movie before Daniel Craig, like none of the other Bond movies connected with yeah. each other at all. They're all self-contained stories, individual stories that work on that level. Because and we and we had a general like assumption that the the Roger Moore movies took place over the course of his Bond verse yeah. and so thing with Connery and Dalt. We assumed that that was the case. There was never hard, like boom, boom, boom. I think there was one thing with like Sean Reed to whoever was after Sean Reed, that there was like a similar villain or something. I think there was one time where there was like a similar villain that crossed in between like two different bonds. But even then it was like, I don't know. It's still very, like a very loose connection or if like is a connection, it's not like this, like, overarching thing where like all their movies connect together it's just like this is like a sequel to that movie well it's like i don't take that m in this movie is the same m from 1995 you know what i mean yeah different m's with different experiences so with no time to die and this being theoretically the ending of this bond verse yeah because they've already came out with interviews with craig being like bond should but there shouldn't be a female bond for this reason or Whatever, and the writer was yep. like, "Yeah, well, there shouldn't be a female Bond for this reason." Whatever they do next, because they're not going to not do another Bond series. Obviously, it makes yep. so much fucking money. If they're going to do this Spectre type thing from the first movie, we get we well, yeah. Start, if you're going to do yeah, if you're going to do that, you need to set that up. Yeah, we got to start. We got to start laying the groundwork. We got to start doing the Thanos yep. shit from the get go. And then well, 15 yeah, I think years that's later. the number one thing that Marvel has taught everybody, which is that if you're going to do this overarching thing where you've got this plot that extends through multiple movies, you need to set that shit up ahead of time. Yeah. Like, you need to have an outline. You need to know. You don't need to know all the exact details, but you need to know from this movie to this movie, this is where we've got to get to. And yeah. this is, like, where our end goal is. And we can, like... You know, everything's kind of like nebulous and like loosey goosey in between, but we can start at least making hints and stuff in these early movies to how we're gonna yeah. get to this point. It's either you go the hard route and do that, or you go the Mission Impossible route, which is where they acknowledge the previous events. Yeah. But they don't they don't put anything in concrete except for the major events. Yeah. They never be like they never they're never like that was two years ago. I mean, Maybe. the only thing that's really up to the Rogue Nation and Fallout because those are like kind of almost direct sequels each, of each other with the I can't remember but the female yeah the female Ethan Hunt basically that shows up in those movies that like mm-hmm. connects with the Syndicate and whatnot because both those movies have had to deal with the Syndicate. But other than that, like the really only major plot point was the fact that Ethan Hunt was married in the third movie. And exactly. Like, that's the only thing. And that wasn't even brought up till the last movie. So. But we know that, but the way that, um, what's his name's character, but the way that, that Peg talks and the black guy talk, yeah. they clearly acknowledge, like, there's that the other movies exist. Yeah. But the black guy is like, uh, Ethan, uh, like, t- type yeah. of stuff. We're like, so, okay, we're getting in the least committal way 
mm-hmm. acknowledgement of Mission Impossible 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever. Yeah. So, if, and if you want to do that with Bond, you can. Just do it that way. Where it's yeah. like, Bond sits down at the beginning of the movie and, and M's like, man, that job in fucking Kosovo was hard, huh? Oh, you know M, blah, 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 blah. Something like, something super, just like, brush it off. We acknowledge it. If you're not going to do that, then you have to go the Marvel route, which is the, we're going to go the complete, they're connected. Or you just not do it at all. Or not do it at all. But the way that the world goes, you can't not, because even fucking Bourne does it. Bourne's been gone two years. You know what I mean? He's been hiding away in Africa for two years. Oh my God, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's you know Jason I mean? Bourne. So I, I don't know, man, but we'll see what happens. Obviously next week we'll, we'll have that, guys, for the podcast. Yeah. Uh, Zach, any final thoughts before we wrap up? No, I, I, I don't want to give this movie any more energy. I'm over <laughs> it. I'm over this movie. I agree. I don't think I'll ever watch it again. So I'm right there with you, man. This is in my watch alongs of Daniel Craig movies. I'll just skip past this one. Yeah, I'll just stop at fucking, fucking Quantum. I like Skyfall, but yeah, I have bigger issues than you do. Yeah, you've got bigger concerns with that, but yeah, he could have killed him at any point. Was or killed him at any point? What's the fucking point? What's the point? The point is to have a movie. <laughs> Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And we'll find that out in December with Matrix 4. Just because we can doesn't mean that we should. Well, yeah. The, I mean, we've talked about that. They they better have a pretty a goddamn reason. good reason a of good why reason. Matrix 4 even exists. Exactly. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back next week on Check the Vetting Machines with No Time to Die. See you guys.